Hey guys, this is IX Roll at IX with Rollout Reviews doing another casual action figure unboxing. Today we're taking a look at Figma number 276, Yami Yugi, from what else? Yu-Gi-Oh! I have been a long-time fan of the original Yu-Gi-Oh! series, as well as, surprisingly, 5Ds I thought was pretty good. I've been in and out of the card game pretty much all my life, until I decided that it's just too expensive to keep up with a card game I rarely have a chance to actually play. I'd rather spend that money on things like action figures. So here we are. Over the years, there hasn't been too many options as far as Yu-Gi-Oh! action figures, but since it is the 20th anniversary, they've been a little bit more open with the license, and we've seen things like Revel Tech figures, which uh, I don't think look all that good. And then, of course, these Figma figures. This is the first in the line, but they've also announced a Dark Magician Girl. And while I'm not too interested in that one, if they made a classic Dark Magician, a normal Yugi when he's not possessed by the Pharaoh, a Kaiba, or like, I don't know, maybe even a Blue Eyes, I would be all over that. And if they made a Yusei Fudo, I need to have that as well. Can you imagine if they made his motorcycle? I would lose my mind. But let's pull things back a little bit and take a look at the box here. Rather large. This is actually my first Figma, uh, so it's kind of a new experience here. I feel like, and this is just sort of first impressions here, Figma does anime style figures better than anybody. At least the ones that aren't helmeted, like Tiger and Bunny and things like that. Uh, but I am no expert, of course, so let's Crack this open and find out. A friend of mine has the Figma Samus, and I've had the chance to play around with that a little bit. Very impressive. They make some very high quality figures. So uh, let's see if this one lives up. Just crack right in at the top here. Let's see what's inside. If we can get it. Is there more tape than I think there is? I don't know. This is uh, proving to be a little bit difficult, actually. I was not expecting this. <laughs> Hold on. Aha! There we go. We have seemingly freed the beast. There's this extra little flap here. Interestingly enough, maybe that's a standard for Figma. But let's pull out the large tray here. And uh, what's going on in the back there? Oh, is that a little cardboard base? That's interesting. Huh. So there's a little cutout base in the background that uh, I guess you can place the figure on? I don't know. Very strange. I don't plan on doing that myself, though. Anyway, here's what we have inside. Lots of empty space here, but one interesting thing is that pretty much all Figma figures, as far as I understand, include a stand. Uh, because, well, let's be honest, most of them are like anime figures, and they have kind of small feet and lots of hair. So, um, they kind of need these stands to help them, uh, help them, well, stand. I guess that's self-explanatory, but it's nice to see, so... Let's see, is there any extra tape, or are we good to go? I think we're good to go, so... Let's set that off to the side and see what we got. So, there's a little pocket under here with lots of things. Let's take a look at those first. Here is the stand. Yeah, it says Figma on it. That's to be expected. Uh, we have... Oh, <clears throat> I can't speak. We also have a little bag here to uh, store all of the little accessories, which I've heard about, never experienced firsthand, but uh, yeah, there it is. The infamous bag for storing parts. So if you don't want to keep the, uh, the packaging around, uh, you don't lose any of the tiny little pieces. Um, so let's actually open up the stand here. See what that's like. 
I apologize for anybody who knows all of this uh, standard Figma knowledge, because, like I said, I am a novice, very experienced with SH figure arts and things of the likes, even some Kotobukiya figures, but uh, this whole Figma scene is new to me. There you go, there is the stand, presumably, that'll attach to his back or something, I don't know. Come back to that later. We also have a little tray of additional hands, which is kind of a, a nice way of doing things instead of just, you know, in the uh, plastic bubble. They're on their own little, uh, little rack here. Very neat way of doing things so that none of them get lost. We'll swap out some of these later, but uh, you got a pointing hand, some card holding hands, um, some other holding hands, maybe for holding on to the Millennium Puzzle, some open hands, things like that. So that is very cool. We want to take a look at the instructions. We're, we're adults. Well, I'm an adult, at least. <laughs> I can handle myself. All right. Let's take this guy out. He's actually rather small, although uh, Yugi is quite short in the show. Let's just kind of get this out of the way so it doesn't interfere with focus too much. There he is with his ridiculous hair, but if you grew up in the early 2000s and are familiar with his character design, you're probably used to it by now. Very nice face sculpt with the uh, the Animu eyes and whatnot. Very spiky towards the back. Pretty well realized in 3D, I think. Little hole on his back for his uh, awesome like cape thing, his coat cape. So uh, let's take a look at the articulation right off the bat here. He seems to have a ball joint in the neck. Uh, there isn't really a second joint at the base of the neck though uh, his shoulders how far can those go out seems to be like a pull out joint there so pretty far actually materials seem pretty nice details all seem pretty nice too uh, for what you're paying for this figure they better be uh elbow joint a little over 90 that's good he feels a little bit more like gummy than a figure art. I mean, he's still very solid. It's still pretty solid plastic, but there's kind of a, a very interesting, uh, very interesting composition to the plastic. I don't really know how to explain it. Got a waist joint in there as well. His uh, fashionable two belts there, as well as his little choker piece here. His deck box is there towards the back, but uh, doesn't open or anything. I've seen uh, pictures of some shoddy paintwork on the belt buckle here, but it's not too bad on mine. Let's see, the legs. Wow, they actually have a surprising amount of, of motion. Uh, it looks like this is like a rubber piece at the front, so uh, that can kind of move out of the way. Uh, fortunately, you know, with Yugi, with a character like this, I don't think you're going to need too much hip articulation because more often than not he's just going to be standing there dramatically in you know a, a still dual pose there are his shoes not a whole lot of waist waist ankle that's not his waist his ankle not a whole lot of ankle articulation hmm. uh, maybe i can work something out over the break here there's his knee the joint's kind of visible but what do you expect Pretty good. So, let's move on to his accessories. <laughs> it's kind of funny. There's just like this wad of uh, bubble wrap here at the back to uh, keep the spikes on the back of his hair from getting messed up. That's kind of funny. Um, he has some extra faces and some extra eyes. So, let's start by swapping those here. Uh, I think his bangs come off. Let's see if I can work that without ripping something. Oh, that's very sharp back here. Uh, hello? There we go. There, it's starting to go. Yep, that whole thing comes off. And, uh, whoa! That is very surreal. And then, uh, his face comes off. <laughs> 
Let's see how this works. Uh, just come from underneath, maybe? Hello? Hmm. Again, I apologize for my lack of knowledge. Okay, there we go. Give me your face! Just like that, okay? Him without bangs is uh, very strange, but that is almost childhood ruining, all right? And then uh, the disembodied eyes can come out here, and those can be swapped as well. So here's his face that just kind of has a pleasant smirk on it. He also has uh, this face where he's very angry there, and it's you know much more stern. And this pair of eyes that's in here is looking off to the side, but presumably those can be swapped out as well here. If I can manage, yep, yeah, there you go. And then he has one last pair of eyes here that's looking off to the other side. Is this stuck in place somehow? No. All right, so that goes in there like that. And there he is looking the other way. So I think I'm actually going to go with that for now. That just plugs on here. And then we can give his bangs back. There we go. Back to normal. Uh, is that on? No, that is not on actually quite correctly. His face here needs to be... There we go completely put in and there we go there he is looking off to the side just like that all right moving on uh let's give him his millennium puzzle because he looks a little naked without it I always thought yugi looked a little naked without the millennium puzzle like in the last duel uh of the the original series uh the pharaoh versus yugi himself Neither of them wearing the Millennium Puzzle. It was very strange to me. But anyway, I know he was without the puzzle several times in the show beyond that. But, uh, oh, there's actually a little piece of tape here. Is it tape or is it just, like, plastic? It's kind of sticky. I don't know. Let's get this out. Come on. Come on. You know, over the years, I've kind of wanted a little replica Millennium Puzzle, but most of them aren't realized in the full three dimensions, unfortunately. But this one, of course, is, and it actually has... Is this a metal chain or plastic? I legitimately can't tell. It might be plastic, but it also might be metal, so I don't really know. It's kind of hard to tell uh, with the uh, the studio lights warming things up here, but... Let's see, how does this, how does this go on? Do I need to pop his head off? I think I might need to pop his head off. Let's see how difficult that is. Ah! Oh, it's just a little peg. Okay. I think it's meant to do that. That was kind of scary, though. All right. The trauma continues. <laughs> so that goes on there. It does sort of annoy me that, uh, well, I guess it should be expected the way the chain is attached, but, you know, the little Egyptian eye there doesn't, Face completely forward. You know, it's kind of off to the side standard, but oh well, you can kind of get it facing forward. So long as you're okay with a crooked chain, but that goes on there like that, and there he is finally with the uh, Millennium Puzzle. Yu-Gi-Oh! Okay, now let's get him equipped with his dual disc. There's this uh, mysterious little, like, nail <laughs> sticking in there. I assume that's put in place just so that the hole there doesn't get closed up in the factory or something? I, I don't know, just to kind of keep it open so it's easy to swap the joint. I, I can't really say. But uh, anyway, there is the, there's the dual disc realized pretty well. And there's no motion or anything. Unfortunately, it doesn't fold up or anything like that either. It would have been nice to have like a folded up dual disc as well, uh, but what do you, what can you do, I guess. Um, it also would have been nice to be able to like set cards on this, but there's no way of doing that. So, you know, your Yugi's forever in kind of a state of, I guess, the start of a duel rather than mid-duel where cards have already been played. But oh well. 
So that comes off easy enough. This is actually quite pleasant to uh, swap these joints here. I'm liking that. Uh, but let's, instead of giving him the fist here, let's give him... Uh, which hand are we working with? This one here. Let's give him a hand that he can hold his uh, card hand with. Of course, first we need to give him the dual disc there. Um, <laughs> come on. What was that little nail for, if not to make this easy to do? Are you... I don't want to, like, break the disc part here, of course. I'm being a little bit cautious. Okay, there we go. Good enough. Let's fix fix his puzzle up. And let's give him this alternate hand. Like that. Okay, cool. There he is. Uh, now we have more little accessories here. There's another piece of film in front here to keep those from falling around. But first, we have a, a hand of five cards here. You know, they're not excellently detailed, but they get the job done. I imagine if this was done by somebody like SH Figure Arts, they probably would have made a bunch of little, like, thin plastic cards. With like you know they would have made like a dark magician and and maybe the Egyptian gods something like that because uh, that's what they do but it doesn't seem like that's what Figma's agenda is but he can hold on to that and uh, he's got he's got a hand of cards which looks rather nice then of course uh, he also comes with an individual card here very similarly detailed. To, uh, to hold in his other hand. So let's take a look at that as well. Just little pegs here. And the hands swap very simply. I don't think there's any which way this goes. Although maybe one rectangle is a little bit smaller than the other. So one's supposed to be the name, the other's supposed to be the card text. But he can hold on to that, like so. I do kind of like that they are like a solid plastic, and they're rather thick. You know, it, it it's less uh, uh, tenuous than the little tiny thin cards that uh, the SH Figure Arts common uh, riders that I have come with. Uh, and then finally, we have the uh, Domino High School uniform jacket here. But of course. Sometimes in the show, let's actually get this off to the side. We don't need that tray anymore. Sometimes in the show, uh, Yugi wants to be fancy and sort of sort of wear that coat like a cape. Um, unfortunately, I think like most of the duels that are most nostalgic to me, uh, he's just wearing the coat normally rather than wearing it like this. But you know, in the Battle City arc, which is arguably one of the you know, the best arcs in the show. Um, often, he will wear his coat like this, and a peg in the back here, that, hmm, very, very snugly pegs in there. I hope that's not too difficult to take out if I want to display him without the cape. It's also kind of permanently at this very dramatic angle, rather than kind of sitting down on his back uh, like a cape sometimes does. But there you go, there is Yugi. Now then, Anubis, this is still a duel, and I still have one face-down card to play. Reverse of Reverse, which allows me to use the last card played by Kaiba! Again, one of my favorite scenes from the original series, from Pyramid of Light, in fact, and in that movie, he's just wearing his jacket normally. 
Something I wish I could recreate. I almost wonder if they will make a retooled Yugi Moto figure that has like shorter legs maybe, and is actually wearing the jacket proper. Then it would be cool if you could swap pieces between the two figures. So you could have a normal Yugi uh, without the jacket going sleeveless, and then you can have this figure actually wearing the jacket proper. That would be pretty cool. So there are a few things that I figured out when playing around with this figure. Uh, first of all, Figma joints are very weird, but also kind of cool in the way that, like, the way the head attaches, as you saw, and the way the forearm attaches, with, like, those rods going through pieces of the body, that's in, like, almost every portion of the figure. So you can actually get more ranges out of this guy by slightly uh, dislodging the joints a little bit. I was able to get more out of the feet that way, more out of the elbows. Another really cool thing is you can see, towards the back here, he actually has a joint in his torso. And then the front piece here is made out of a rubbery material. So you can actually get ab crunch even though the torso is completely seamless from the front. And that is just so cool. There's some really awesome toy engineering going on here. Unfortunately, all of like the rods uh, connecting the joints does mean that sometimes if you rotate like the waist joint too much, it'll actually pop out, which is a little bit uh, discomforting. But of course, then you can just uh, plug it back together. It's almost actually like Revel Tech in a way, but um, I don't know, I think it looks a bit better personally. Uh, of course, you do have a little hole at the bottom of the cape. So if we bring the uh, the stand back in place, I do recommend taking off this adapter piece here first and then plugging that in. It just makes things so much easier. If he's not wearing the cape, ah! That's what I was talking about. <laughs> uh, if you want to see what the joint looks like in there, there you go. But let's just... Uh, Let's just forget that happened. Anyway, if you want to attach the stand uh, when he's not wearing the cape, you can just plug it into the hole that the cape attaches to. But otherwise, uh, getting it in here is very difficult, actually. It's pretty snug, just like the cape was getting into his back. But once it's in there, you can then attach him to the stand. Of course, as you saw, even though he's very back heavy, I was able to get him standing, uh, well, of course, without the stand, but uh, this definitely helps and will sort of ensure he doesn't fall over on your shelf, which is nice. Let me get his puzzle all situated here. It's another problem. Uh, sometimes the chain links get stuck in that top loop. I still haven't figured out if that's metal or not. Hmm... So keep in mind that he's up on the stand, and thus a little bit higher up than he would be otherwise. Uh, there he is with a ruler, and if I lift it up just a little bit, uh, he comes up to just about six inches, I think, at the top of his hair there. With that in mind, here he is, compared to an SH Figuarts card game playing Kamen Rider. Here he is, next to a warrior class transformer, who also has ridiculous hair. And then here he is, next to a bionicle figure, who uh, has a golden artifact and wears a disc on his arm? I don't know. I tried my best to make all the comparisons relevant in some way. So last but not least, I want to take a look at how I plan on displaying this figure. I picked this up a couple months ago. This is Yugi's Legendary Decks. This is a card set that comes with three decks full of cards that Yugi uses in the original series. Very, very cool. But this isn't about that. It comes in this very shiny, golden, Egyptian-style box here. And I thought this would complement the figure very, very well. So... Sit him up top, and alone, that looks pretty good. You could just roll with the display like this. But what is a Yu-Gi-Oh! display without some actual cards? I also picked up these very simple L-shaped 
display stands here. They're made of acrylic. And I got a pack of six of these for like four bucks on eBay. So let's set some of these up top here like that. And then we can set a few more down below. And then I just put some of the cards that came in this set in standard Ultra Pro uh, top loaders here. And now we can have Dark Magician, Dark Magician Girl, and of course the three Egyptian gods displayed all around the figure. And I think this looks so cool and it's so simple to do unfortunately i don't have any room to display it like this i lacked a little bit of foresight because now i need to clean off some shelves to make way for this massive display so keep that in mind if this is something you're planning on doing and of course for those who don't generally collect action figures maybe they're just a Yu-Gi-Oh fan here's a comparison next to a standard sized Yu-Gi-Oh card for you so in summary I think this is a great figure it's a nice first outing into the Figma series and it's a nice first outing into the Figma Yu-Gi-Oh line of figures I hope they make more I certainly do because this one is great Unfortunately, I do wish it maybe came with a little bit more for the price you're paying. I mean, it's not a cheap figure, and it would have been nice to have, like, maybe an extra dual disc that's folded up, and maybe a few extra faces. I mean, Yugi shouts a lot, and the fact that there isn't an open-mouth shouting face in this set uh, is kind of a shame. But otherwise, I really enjoy it, and... That is about it. So, until next time, this is IX Roll at IX, signing off.